Hi, Heart Room friends. It was so nice to see some of you this morning on Google Classroom and Google Hangout. Um, I miss you guys. Um, today, oh, and today we have Flamingo with us. I think every day we're going to have a new puppet friend joining us for the story. And today we're on the chapter called Journey to Dream Country. We're on page 70 if you want to follow along. Or you can get out your markers and crayons like Grayson. And you can draw pictures of all the things that you see. And that's okay too and fun. Journey to Dream Country. After the mad frob scottle party was over, Sophie settled herself again on top of the enormous table. You is feeling better now? Asked the big friendly giant. Much better. Thank you, Sophie said. Whenever I is feeling a bit scrotty, the BFG said, a few gollops of frob scottle is always making me hop scotchy again. I must say, it's quite an experience, Sophie said. It's a razz twizzler, the BFG said. It's gloriumptious. He turned away and strode across the cave and picked up his dream-catching net. I is galloping off now, he said, to catch some more wopsy, whiffling dreams for my collection. I is doing this every day without missing. Is you wishing to come with me? Not me, thank you very much, Sophie said, not with those other giants lurking outside. I is snuggling you very cozy into the pocket of my waistcoat, the BFG said. Then no one is seeing you. Before Sophie could protest, he had picked her up off the table and popped her into the waistcoat pocket. There was plenty of room in there. Is you wishing for a little hole to peep out from, he asked her. There is one here already, she said. She had found a small hole in the pocket, and when she put one eye close to it, she could see out very well indeed. She watched the BFG as he bent down and filled his suitcase with empty glass jars. He closed the lid, picked up the suitcase in one hand, took the pole with the net in the other, and marched towards the entrance of the cave. As soon as he was outside, the BFG set off across the great hot yellow wasteland where blue rocks lay and the dead trees stood and where all the other giants were skulking about. Sophie, squatting low on her heels in the pocket of the leather waistcoat, had one eye glued to the little hole. She saw the group of enormous giants about 300 yards ahead. Hold your breaths, the BFG whispered down to her. Cross your figglers, here we go. We is going right past all these other giants. Is you seeing that walking great one, the one nearest to us? I see him, Sophie whispered back, quivering. That is the horriblest of them all, and the biggest of them all. He is called Flesh Lump Eating Giant. I don't want to hear about him, Sophie said. He is 54 feet high, the BFG said. Okay, so I'm five and a half feet tall. He's 54 feet high. Whew! As he jogged along, and as he is walloping human beings like they is sugar lumps, two or three at a time. You're making me nervous, Sophie said. I is nervous myself, the BFG whispered. I always get as jumpsy as a jog hopper when the flesh lump eating giant is around. Keep away from him, Sophie pleaded. Not possible, the BFG answered. He is galloping easily two times as quickly as me. Shall we turn back, Sophie said. Turning back is worse, the BFG said. If they is seeing me running away, they is all giving chase and throwing rocks. They would never eat you, would they? Sophie asked. Giants is never guzzling other giants, the BFG said. They is fighting and quarreling a lot with each other. Squirreling a lot with each other, but never guzzling. Human beings is more tasty to them. The giants had already spotted the BFG and all heads were turned, watching him as he jogged forward. He was aiming to pass well to the right of the group. Through her little peephole, Sophie saw the flesh lump eating giant moving over to intercept them. Do you know what intercept means? Do you think he's going to stop them? He didn't hurry. He just lopped over casually to a point where the BFG would have to pass. The others lopped after him. Sophie counted nine of them all together, and she recognized the blood bottler in the middle of them. They were bored. They had nothing to do until nightfall. There was an air of menace about them as they lopped slowly across the plain with long, walloping strides, heading for the BFG. Here comes the runty one, boomed the flesh lump eater. Ho, oh, ho, there, runty one. Where is your splotch winkling away to in such a hefty hurry? He shot out an enormous arm and grabbed the BFG by the hair. The BFG didn't struggle. 
he simply stopped and stood quite still and said, Be so kind as to be letting go of my hair, flesh lump eater. The flesh lump eater released him and stepped back a pace. The other giant stood around, waiting for the fun to start. Now then, you little grob squiffler, boomed the flesh lump eater. We is all wanting to know where you was galloping off to every day in the daytime. Nobody ought to be galloping off, galloping off to anywhere until it is getting dark. The human beings could easily be spotting you and starting a giant hunt, and we is not wanting that to happen, is we not? We is not, shouted the other giants. Go back to your cave, runty one. I is not galloping to any human being country, the BFG said. I is going to other places. I is thinking, said the flesh lump eater, that you is catching human beings and keeping them as pets. Right as you, cried the blood bottler. Just now, I is hearing him chittering away to one of them in the cave. You is welcome to go and search my cave from frack to bunt, said the BFG. You can go looking into every crook and nanny. There is no human beans or stringy beans or runner beans or jelly beans or any other beans in there. Sophie crouched still as a mouse inside the BFG's pocket. She hardly dared to breathe. She was terrified she might sneeze. The slightest sound or movement would give her away. Through the very tiny peephole, she watched the giants clustering around the poor BFG. How revolting they were. All of them had piggy little eyes and enormous mouths with thick sausage lips. When the flesh lump eater was speaking, she got a glimpse of his tongue. It was jet black, like a slab of black steak. Every one of them was more than twice as tall as the BFG. Suddenly, the flesh lump eater shot out two enormous hands and grabbed the BFG around the waist. He tossed him high into the air and shouted, catch him, manhugger. Manhugger caught him. The other giants spread out quickly in a large circle, each giant about 20 yards from his neighbor, preparing for the game they were about to play. Now the manhugger threw the BFG high and far, shouting, catch him, bone cruncher. Look at the poor BFG being tossed around from giant to giant. We'll have to stop there for now, and tomorrow we're going to find out whether Sophie and the BFG survived the terrible giants. A good evening.